All right, we're gonna be focusing on bronze Lowry acids and bases. This is gonna be concept D in your note packet. You may have noticed with our discussion so far about Arrhenius bases that our first three on table L in your reference tables matches what we know about Arrhenius bases, that it's going to be placing hydroxide ions as their only negative ion in solution. So what's going on with aqueous ammonia? We can see that there's no hydroxide ion present. Well, this falls under the alternative bronze Lowry theory. Bronze Lowry acids are going to be donating a proton, hydrogen ion, to another species, and the bronze Lowry base is going to be accepting this proton from the bronze Lowry acid. So for this example, um, we can see that HF is going to be donating a proton. It's going from HF to just a fluoride ion, so it's losing or donating a proton, and thus is our acid. And we can see that when it donates the proton to water, it leaves in a hydronium ion in solution. And remember, hydronium ions are responsible for the acidic properties. So HF then is an acid under the bronsted lowry theory. This also specifically explains why substances like ammonia has no hydroxide ions but can still act as a base. So here we're going to be mixing ammonia into water in the reaction we can see that NH3 is gaining a proton, meaning that it's accepted a proton from water, thus producing hydroxide ions. Um, remember that the species that accepts that proton, in this case ammonia, is considered our bronsted lowry base. Ammonia is an amphiprotic substance that can act as either an acid or a base depending on the situation. Um, depending on what it's mixed with, Ammonia, water, and some various other substances can take on either a bronze Lowry acid or base composition um, due to that. So here we can give you two examples of some bronze Lowry reactions. So go ahead and see if you can identify the acid and the base based on the movement of a proton. You should come up that our first one, NH3, is going to act as a base because the hydrogen is moving from our acid being donated to ammonia, which is why, where we see the hydrogen being um, added in. In our second example, we can see that the hydrogen is moving from my first reactant to water to make our hydronium concentration. So H2O is gaining that proton to become H3O+, plus, so that's considered our base, and the first reactant, our acid. Now, conjugate acid-base pairs just add on to this idea of identifying acids and bases. Conjugate acid-base pairs are compounds that differ by the presence of one proton. All acids have a conjugate base. This is formed when their proton has been donated, given away. And then all bases have a conjugate acid. This is the compound that's formed when they have accepted their proton. So big idea is conjugate acid-base pairs always differ by the presence of one hydrogen or proton. The acid on the left becomes the base on the right and vice versa. If we look at our reverse reaction, we're going to see that H3O plus donates its hydrogen back to the other ion, thus this one acting like an acid in the reverse reaction, and our second product acting like our base in the reverse reaction, and that's important. Um, so if I pair these, HNO2 differs by HNO2 or NO2 by one proton. So this is a pair, um, our acid and its conjugate base. Again, they differ simply by a proton. And then finally, H2O and H3O plus hydronium are also, in this case, a conjugate acid base pair. They differ by the presence of one proton. And as I mentioned before, in the reverse reaction, the conjugate acid will now donate a proton, do reforming the original base, and the conjugate base will accept a proton, reforming the original acid. Here I want you to go ahead and identify the acid base and see if you can identify its conjugate acid and conjugate base in this reaction. You should come up with NH3 acting as our base. It's going to be accepting a proton from HCO3. And then over here, NH3 is going to be paired with NH4. And then our HCO3 is paired with our CO3, our carbonate ion. So a base with its conjugate acid and then acid with its conjugate base. And if we look at the reverse reaction, NH4 will donate the H back to CO3 ion, thus acting as an acid in the reverse reaction and as a base in the reverse reaction. You also should be able to write um, the corresponding conjugate base or acid for various substances. So here we're writing a conjugate base. For acetic acid, we have this formula with our proton out in front. And to write the conjugate base, remember we want it to differ by a hydrogen. Acids give away a proton. So our conjugate base should differ by the decrease of one proton 
from our formula, as we can show here. Now remember, we're not just giving away a hydrogen, it's a hydrogen ion or a proton. So we're also losing that positive charge. So this will take on a negative one charge um, when this occurs. Our second example, again, to write the conjugate base, this acid has to donate one of its protons away, leaving us with HPO4 with a negative two charge. And then here, writing the conjugate acid, hydroxide is going to, as a base, gain or accept a proton to become H2O. And then same thing, Br is going to, acting as a base, accept a proton, so its conjugate acid should have the addition of a proton in the formula. Right. So the strength of an acid or base depends on how readily, easily it accepts or donates a proton. And we're going to find when we get into this a little bit more towards the end of this unit for honors that a strong acid must have a weak conjugate base and vice versa. All right, that's it. There's no summary or quiz to do. So you can just go ahead, review your notes, and come to class prepared.